Live! Hi folks and welcome to Open Analysis Live AMA where we answer your reverse engineering questions. If you like this kind of stuff, go check out our Patreon. Lots more reverse engineering content there. With that, let's get into it. So I had one question that maybe, maybe or not, maybe we skipped. It was any tips for reversing large projects, large scale, complicated mm -hmm. samples, stuff like framework that uses plugins, modules, lots of OPSEC features, how to keep on top of it, how to don't drown in a few dozen nested functions or structures. And I think that Josh is, Josh, Josh and Cerberus are probably two yeah. of the most qualified people to answer that. Cerberus is much more organized than me, so I'll let uh, <laughs> her take this. Uh, yeah, people pick on me for my organization. I would yeah. never pick on you for that. Um, Just for the record. So because, usually... Because they're German. <laughs> well, I'm actually um, part Polish, actually. Um, that's where it's it comes not... from. We're oh, not, that we're might not, be where it comes from. We're not racist at all. It's just a little stereotype oh. in there. <laughs> but, all right. Let's not go. Um, let's not get off track. I want an answer to this question because I'm. I yeah. It's, it's a. I think modules. A... Yeah, yeah. I can talk about that a bit. Um, I've actually dealt with a few. Um, well, Josh knows. Um, so usually they'll have some kind of framework to to load these modules, right? So understanding, right, my, my first look into it would be like, how is it, right? What's the mechanism for loading modules, right? Is it .NET reflection, right? Which I've seen modules done done in this way, which Draconia probably has more uh, experience than me in perhaps. Um, so I've done some of that. And also I've seen modules where it's done via DLLs, right? Or um, just downloading executables and, and running them, right? Um, depending on how they have it implemented, um, creating something to extract those modules for you um, based on some of your scripting, right? If they're embedded in the executable or whether they're coming from the C2. Um, if they're from a C2, you would want to emulate and download that. And if um, it's you know, just in the binary, you'd of course, want to write an extractor or contribute to malware CFG on GitHub um, <laughs> or whatnot. Um, yeah, I, I look at that mechanism first. Um, and then I look at the individual modules there after that. Right now, we are doing Redline Stealer, which is very modular um, and has a very specific modular framework where they're using, you know, uh, data contracts and dynamic invocation of of their modules. So as soon as we started understanding that, the reversing of the modules became quite a lot easier and making sure you document that the, the whole way through. Um, anyway, that's probably a whole lot of information. I'll pass it over to Josh because I'm sure there's things he could add on to that. Dodo. I want to say so hi. The... Hello. Hey, hi how's it going? So the, yeah, from a high level perspective, um, how to not drown in large, uh, any program that you're reverse engineering really is, um, well, I find the best technique to take is, well, mark up everything as much as you can. So even if you don't know what a function, basically like what Sergey does on stream is, even if he doesn't know exactly what a function does, he'll like mark it to know that he's actually traveled to that function. Um, or even if you can just give a high level guess as to what a function is, you should always change the name. Um, if you are, and, and then kind of general career advice is just divide and conquer. So take usually what I do at work um, or with any of these types of tasks is just doing the simplest thing first. Uh, if you're getting really stuck or if you're getting really burnt out. Um, and then usually just do more difficult things from there. Um, and yeah, just divide and conquer as much as you can into smaller and smaller chunks. And then eventually you'll see the bigger and bigger picture. And then before you know it, you'll you'll be done with the sample, so. Yeah, I think those are, those are good points. One of the things that I do a lot, so like Josh said, is rename functions. Like I prefix mine with maybe this thing 
<laughs> maybe the number of you know, question marks at the end indicates the degree nice. of uncertainty. Like one, two, three, four. Just keep keep adding. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the other thing I do quite a lot is I will use my session either in Ida or Ghidra as a place where I take like extensive notes. So I overuse the the comment system in everything that I'm doing. Um, that way, you know, there's, there's no question this thing means this thing or, or whatever, right? It just organizes my thoughts much better. Um, and I also take copious amounts of notes. Um, and usually I'll block out my notes to prevent me from getting lost in sections and subsections. Um, and then, you know, if I feel like there's something that I want to come back to in my notes, I'll just write the word placeholder. Um, <laughs> and then I will. Do you have those notes in a those. separate thing as well? They always just comment, or do you use like no, like another note taking app to? to so, so, so where I put placeholder is in another note taking app. I use Obsidian specifically, mm -hmm. uh, religiously. So I'll have my notes in there, and different parts I'll come back to, and I'll put like placeholder or whatnot. And sometimes I'll store addresses that are of interest in there as well um, with the placeholder, like saying, hey, you need to go back here and look at this later. Um, since since Sergey is moderating, I will moderate a little bit. Um, the, the original question was about large scale projects and there was a comment in the chat by MS RevEng, which in case some of you don't know, I think this is, uh, this is Rolf. And, oh, uh, docs. So whenever, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whenever, whenever, he speaks up you should probably listen uh he recommends using folders in ida for categorizing yeah. functions but what is basically the same among all people who talked about organizing large-scale projects is organization right they all try to organize what they have already reverse engineered at very meticulously and i think that's that's the biggest takeaway so that wraps it up. Big thanks to our panel of experts. You can go check out their socials here. Thank you very much. And if you guys want to see more reverse engineering content like this, in-depth tutorials, live streams, your questions answered, go check out our Patreon. Lots more stuff like that there. And stay tuned for the next question.